Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Well, we're back into the Psalms this morning. <coughs> After being led into some other scriptures to cover and other subjects, we're back into the Psalms. And I was thinking this morning about um, this video series that I'm going to do, or these series of videos that's going to become a video series. Um, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, it's, uh, it's going to be a, a playlist and a series of videos when I'm going to have the house to myself here for about four or five days um, addressing the issues of the day. And I'm going to go back and rehash some old uh, issues that we've been dealing with um, because some new scriptures have come to light about these things and dig a little deeper into them and explain them a little bit more, cover some new issues that we're covering. Um, we might cover some headlines here and there. But the main focus is going to be discussing these issues and showing what the Word of God says. And then we have to ask ourselves, are we going to believe what the Bible says or not? And come to a place of personal understanding on this and an agreement with God on these things. And then show how they pertain to our, our everyday lives. And hopefully it will be something very encouraging, something you guys can share with others and help explain to them the truths about the Bible. And uh, I'm going to do a, a, the first one is going to be a preface to it. Um, and I'm going to show you guys some things in there. We're going to open the video series going through the book of Jude. And that's going to kick everything off. And what I'm planning on, if it, if it goes out the way it, I'm thinking it's going to go, then uh, it's probably going to be two videos a day, but they're going to be spaced out. And I don't know if I'm going to end up filming them all at once, or and then just set them to upload at certain times, or do some each day. But we'll see. Because i still got a car i got to fix. So... There's a, a lot going on, a lot. Um, I'm kind of hoping to do a headline video after this. There's a lot going on um, and a lot of things that are, again, confirming. I was talking to Angel Eyed Girl last night on email and it, she was showing me this lineup on this, uh, It's a, I think it's online games and it's, it shows the, it's almost like in a movie theater, the marquee, you see the little uh, posters for the movies and it has it, the images on there and it's funny because the titles of these games and stuff it was almost like it was talking about the rapture and then right after that the tribulation it's kind of weird anyway uh, if I think if I remember I'll show you guys but uh, it's everything today everything is confirming what we already know you just, all you got to do is stand in one spot and spin a slow 360 degree circle and everything you see is, is confirming it. Um, news media, um, messages on boards, marquees, I mean, it's just, it's everywhere. And I kind of see something about to happen. I don't know how broad, widespread or it's going to be. But I think a bunch of churches are going to open their doors and say, if you want to know the truth, come in now. You may see a message like that on marquees and churches that are open saying, if you want to know the truth, come in now. There won't be a bunch of them, but there'll be some. And it's going to make a bunch of waves. It's going to cause a bunch of people to get excited. It's going to cause people to get arrested. It's going to be called all kinds of stuff. And it'll be quick and short-lived, and then it's going to get shut down. And I think that's going to be the catalyst for people to see Christians in a completely different light. They already kind of do, but it's not vocal. But I think it's going to change. I don't know when it'll happen. Probably pretty quick, but just watch for that. You may see churches open up and say, if you want to know the truth, get in here. We'll tell you the truth. And it's basically going to be them counseling, telling them the truth. This is what the truth is. In an attempt to save as many people as possible before the everything is completely locked down. Because we're right on the cusp of everything being locked down. <coughs> so... I don't want to get into the headlines because there's headlines that tie to this, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, there, there's, again, guys, if you stay up all night, every hour, the news changes every hour. There's something new all the time. It's, it's nuts. So we're back in the Psalms this morning. And when I opened up the, 
list with all the Psalms in it, Psalm 20 was the first one that jumped out. And this is the assurance of God's saving work. Right now, it's perfect, right now, that's what we need. People need reminders and assurances. Much of what we're going to cover in this next week are going is going to be that. We touch on these subjects of the day. It's going to be uh, reaffirmations, reminders, um, assurances of what we already know. Because a lot of people are starting to slip and stumble. Because people aren't covering these things properly. They're not digging into the word and sharing the details that confirm these. They're just grandstanding, trying to get, you know, like at a carnival, the the guy that, I forget I forget what they call him, but he, he stands up there with his little cane, his stick, and he's got his big top hat on, and he's announcing all the things, and the strong man, the fat lady, the bearded lady, and all that kind of stuff. And th that's what it seems like. They're not actually digging into the scriptures. They're spending more time putting their opinion on what they think out there instead of what God thinks. And we should be gauging everything we do off what God thinks. So that video series, ought, ought, I'm hoping it'll be a real benefit to people. Because we need these reminders. We need these assurances. Because people nowadays are being so bombarded with lies and false truths and half-truths. And, and they make it sound real good. And I've been trying to give everybody the skills they need to counter these things. Like when somebody gives you a verse, go read five verses above and below. If they give you a verse, go look in the Bible and see if it's the whole verse. I, more common than anything, I get half verses. That's Satan, literally Satan's MO. And we prove that. And we're going to prove that again in that video series. We literally proved that that's what, how Satan likes to do it. He likes to use half verses. So if somebody does that, what does that tell you? And that person needs to know they're doing it too. <clears throat> but it, it's it's hard nowadays because so many, there's so much negative out there that a person starts to slip. They start getting distracted and pulled to the side of the path and they start to slip off into the ditch. So we all need to be brought to true center every now and then. And that's what I'm hoping we're going to be able to do. Lord willing, that's what I'm hoping we're going to be able to do. So, and it should be a bunch of encouragement for you guys. We need encouragement. Encouragement to keep going. What we need to be doing right now is encouraging the brethren. Confirming with the brethren. Affirming the brethren. Uplifting the brethren. Building up the brethren. The Bible says that's what we should be doing to each other. Singing, singing to each other in Psalms. Talking to each other. Have we not been doing that? Pretty much all of that on this channel. I don't do any of these, these things that I do on here for no reason, for a purpose. Very specifically. I don't say the things I say for no reason. They're for a purpose. I'm trying every day to be led by the Holy Spirit in these things, that the Holy Spirit will be the one speaking. Because the Holy Spirit has the right words. I don't. That's why my words have such a profound effect. And they're not even my words. Sometimes that effect is negative, sometimes that effect is positive, but it depends on who the recipient is. It's solely based on who the recipient is. There's a reason why we do what we do. There's a reason why God does what he does. There's a reason why his word says what it says. It's not random. It's not by chance. It's for a reason. And we're going to cover a bunch of that starting, I think, tomorrow, I think. Is it tomorrow? Tuesday. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think tomorrow. Thursday. Anyway. This morning we're going to pray Psalm 20. And it's a short one. I thought maybe we'd do it in Anglican chant, but I think we'll just do it normal. We'll see. Holy Spirit might change my mind on that. Um, so, as we go through this morning prayer... If you got to watch the special evening prayer last night, if you haven't, go watch it. We prayed for the Chauvin, Chauvin and his family and Floyd and his family and everybody. We're called to be intercessors and to make intercessory prayer. Well, this morning we're going to do it again, but it's going to be for the encouragement of the brethren. We're going to lift people up. We're going to put ourselves out there. We're going to talk what needs to be said. We're going to speak about what needs to be spoken of. 
it's very vitally important, especially now that we do that. We're at the finish line and people are tripping at the finish line. We are right at the finish line and people are tripping and falling down. And we have to do everything we can to counter that. So if you have a brother or sister in Christ that is struggling, that is slipping, that you're seeing them starting to starting to go off the path, please, ever everybody that's ever been on my channel knows you can share anything I have. I don't care who you are or what your motives are or what you're trying to do. You can share anything I have. None of this is copyrighted, and I highly recommend everybody share them because it's so hard to find truth these days. Real biblical truth. It's so hard to find anybody that even goes through the scriptures deeply. <coughs> That's why I'm very selective on who I listen to. I'm looking for people that are sharing what God's ideas are, what his will is, what his purposes are. And that is only found in his word, not in the individual. There are people out there who will tell you, well, we don't need to go into the, and they'll say this even about my video, well, we don't need to go into the, into the, scriptures because God is telling me what to say and I'm going to tell you what God told me well you're not the Holy Spirit the Bible says the Holy Spirit does that not us and whenever they tell you things and you go open your Bible up and look in your Bible you find out they're wrong they're lying Satan is a liar so we have to be diligent in what we're doing we have to be very paying very close attention to what we're listening to. And I'm, I'm telling you guys, there's something about the sound waves of the voice. They desperately want to talk to you. They desperately want to communicate with you on a very personal level because there's something about how they talk that's, that they think is going to convince you. And you have to insulate yourself from that. The way you do that is living the, the armor in Ephesians 6. The way you do that is when you recognize there's a problem, cut it off. You're not, you're not doing them a disservice. Cut it off. You're, you're sparing yourself the agony of getting pulled into their false doctrine and then having to claw your way back out. It's miserable. I'd rather be in peace all the time. So you've got to be discerning on these things. You've got to use the Bible as your template. What does the Bible say? That's what I'm going to use as my template. And if you do that, you're not wrong. See, people wanted to chastise me for the last couple of years because I use the word of God and go by what it says and use that as my template to find out if a person is legit or not legit. If I don't know if a person is on track or not on track. And then when I did that, they got mad at me. Okay, wait a minute. But you preach from the same Bible I preach from. You're reading the same scriptures I'm reading. You know what those scriptures say. Why are you mad at me for doing what they say? Jesus said, you, you call me Lord, Lord, and why don't you do what I say? If we don't do what he says, what good is it? The word of God is only, only has a power and authority if it's used, if it's applied, not only to us, but to everyone. Believer or unbeliever, I hold them to the word of God. Now, the unbeliever has a gimme because he doesn't know what the word of God is, but I still hold him to that. They're the ones I save with compassion. Remember what it says, make a distinction, save some with compassion, some pulling out of the fire. The unbeliever is the one I save with compassion because they don't know the word of God. The believer or the quote unquote parentheses believer, they know the word of God and don't do it. They're the ones I'm pulling out of the fire. If you know what the word of God is and you're not doing it, if you know what the word of God is and you don't believe it, if you know what the word of God is and you're doing exactly the opposite, you're the one that needs to be pulled out of the fire. Because if we take these precepts, if we take these commands, if we take what he said and we apply it to ourselves first, we see where we're messed up and we're off the path. We fix that. That's repentance, that's sanctification. Then, then we can go to others and say, hey, uh, I see this going on. Look what the word of God says on this. Is that not what the Bible says we're supposed to do? Yes. But whenever you're on the receiving end of it, you start getting conviction. What's the first reaction most people do? Attack the person bringing it to them. We all get conviction. We all need conviction. We need to be reminded of what the truth is and where we should be standing. 
and we should not be standing under the umbrella of false doctrine, lies, deceit, and darkness. We're supposed to be standing under God's wings. See, when we're with him, we don't need an umbrella. He protects us. When you're with them, you're under the umbrella they're holding. And the rain is coming down hard enough that it's not going to protect you. Because if you're standing with them, when they're judged and they're punished, you will suffer that. The Bible says you will suffer that too. We're going to cover all this this next week <coughs> in great detail. Okay, so let's get into some prayer today. Let's encourage each other. Let's remind each other of the assurance we have in salvation. If you are saved, if you belong to God, you cannot be lost. You can lose everything, but you cannot be lost. And the losing of your rewards and losing of your inheritance is a direct result of your actions. It's a direct result of the life you decide to live after being saved. This would be somebody who would be considered a backslider. Now, there's people all the time that are convincing other people they're backsliders. Oh, if you sin, you're a backslider. Well, then you're a backslider too. I told that to somebody one time. I said, then you're a backslider too. Well, I'm not a backslider. I don't sin. Really? Really? So you're perfectly sinless. So you achieved what only one other person in the entire history of mankind has achieved. Well, what? And I'm like, Jesus Christ is the only person that ever lived on this earth sinless. No other human being has ever accomplished it or ever will. That's why he died for us to pay for our sins because we couldn't be sinless. So you're telling me you are the only other person to ever achieve a sinless state. Well, no. And I was like, right now, I'm getting these huge waves of pride coming off you because you think you're something you're not. You are still, are still a sinner. I am still a sinner. So if I'm backslidden because I sin, so are you. When they realize they're in the same boat you are, that totally changes their tune. See, they're letting other people tell them these things. They're letting other people deceive them. But when you learn the truth, when you understand we're all in the same boat, you start putting a little more effort into keeping the water out and keeping it rolling forward. You start to realize, oh, wait a minute. I got to get down off this high horse. It's very important that we know the truth about ourselves, about the Lord and what he did, about our Father in heaven and what his will is. It's very important that we know these things because when we do, when we know what his word says and what it's meant to accomplish, it helps us help others see that light. They're not always going to receive it. In fact, 99.9% .9 of the time, they are going to reject it and attack you for it. You're not looking for that 99.9%. .9 You're looking for that 0.1%. You're looking for that one person that will receive it. That one person who is right there, ready to be changed, ready to be reminded of the truth. And they see it, they hear it, and they're like, I get it. And they turn to the Lord and they're rejoicing in heaven. And you have saved your soul. The other 99.9%, .9 they either going to have to go to somebody else, or God will send somebody else to them, or they're going to, what's going to happen to them is what the Bible says. They will enter into heaven having nothing but salvation. They will enter into heaven as, as passing through flames, which means they just barely made it there. The Bible didn't say that for no reason. It said it for a reason. You can still be saved and lose your inheritance. That is a result of what you're doing. If you think you're okay sinning because you, the blood of Jesus covers you, you're wrong. The blood of Jesus covers you, but not so you can sin. Not so you can keep living the same life you live. The idea was the blood of Jesus covers you while you go through the sanctification process and grow as a Christian, moving away from the world and away from your former life and away from what you used to be and growing in that new birth. When you're born, do you revert back to the protoplasm and the little cell? That's in the womb? No. You grow away from that. That's what we're supposed to be doing. When you become a child, you grow away from becoming a child. When you become a teenager, you grow away from that. We're supposed to constantly be growing away from what we were into what we will become. 
But we only know how to know about that and know how to do that if, if we read the Bible, if we are in prayer, asking the Lord these things, talking about these things, confirming with Him and agreeing with Him our state and our stance and where we are in His will and whether we're there or not. There are so many people out there that are so desperate to, have the, to be chosen by Him that they start making things up. Or they open the door for Satan and Satan tells them these things. And they don't realize it. I was talking to some people a couple of days ago about alien abduction. And I said, uh, if you're ever abducted by an alien, make sure you uh, mention Jesus Christ. Watch what happens. Because I did a video talking about that stuff. A lot of people were talking about that. And people now, even now, are getting on the whole alien thing. And they're talking like, these are, these are the gods, these are the angels, and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, no, no, no. You better get it right. Those are demons. If you're, you're ever in the presence of one of them, you mention Jesus Christ, you watch the reaction you get. Because every alien abduction, when you go do the research, I did it, I did it in a video in 2020, I think. No, it may have been at the end of 2019. When you do the research, you find out that no born-again believer has ever been abducted by an alien. They've been in the presence of others who've been abducted, but they've never been abducted. And the people that were abducted, some of them reported when they were doing their statement, they said that I mentioned Jesus Christ, and they said, just like that, I was back where I was. Why would that be? Demons. You invoke the name of Christ, it has power. They cannot mess with you. Those little details tell us a lot. Those little details remind us of the truth. If you're in Christ, you cannot be touched. If you are in Christ, nothing will befall you. But do you have confidence that you're in Christ? And I'm hoping that this next series of videos is going to establish that with us. Because that's one of the things we're going to talk about. Am I really saved? Have I backslidden and become lost? Well, if salvation is permanent and you can never be snatched out of his hand and not even you can snatch yourself out of God's hand, why would you think something like that? Again, do you believe the word of God? So if you're saved, you're saved. You're saved. But if you're not saved, you better get saved. There is very, very little time. So let's pray this morning. Let's give glory to God. And let's agree with him that we have assurance in him. That if we're saved, that if what we do and say matches what his word says, we are in his grace. We are walking that narrow path. We are striving for Christ. Striving to enter that narrow gate like he said. And every day we grow more and more. And we have peace. And no matter what happens in this world, we will always be that way. Because it only gets better from here. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up as our Holy Father in heaven. To sing praises unto your holy name. Father, this morning we give thanks for the wonderful, cool weather we have outside. It's 45 outside. It's beautiful. We give thanks for the mild seasons that are coming upon us. That It's been such a blessing. We give thanks for your word. Your amazing word that tells us so much. It is such a wealth. It's a well of knowledge and understanding. And it's so deep we can't find the bottom. It's just that you, you can never exhaust it. We thank you that you're telling the Holy Spirit to tell us the truth. That when the time comes, you give us the words that will have the greatest effect. That we give thanks that we know we are saved. And we know that by your word. <coughs> We know that if we are in your word, we are immovable. That is by your power. We know that we are in your truth, that if we are walking according to your will, nothing and no one can harm us. They can't touch us. And to take our life is to literally send us into your presence. And that's a good thing. But the wrath they incur by killing one of us is probably not going to be very good. Well, Father, you have mercy for all. And you have grace for all and on all. It rains on the just and the unjust. When you bless your children in an area, the blessings pour out onto the people around them. I see it. I witness it. 
I, man, I see the manifestation of it in, with my neighbors because you pour out so many blessings on me and it's glorious to see the blessings and the benefit to others. I wish there were more doors open to talk about the gospel more because I'd like to help people, but maybe that's not my thing. Maybe somebody else is going to do that. Well, Father, we give thanks. We give thanks for everything you do for us. And we give thanks that you, we have assurance, like Psalm 20 says, assurance of your saving work, of what you're doing in us and all mankind, if for what you're doing in the sanctification of your children, building us up, strengthening us, confirming with us, teaching us, growing us, so that we may help others do the same. So that we, together, as a body, can support each other. I love my brothers and sisters. You, you know my heart. People I don't know around the world, I love them. I have a love for them. It's been growing. And I worry that they're going to miss the mark because of the lies and the false doctrine that are out there that sound so good, but when compared to your word, are so evil. Well, Father, I thank you that we have a platform to speak on, that we have every day to be able to talk about these things, to pray to you, to worship you, to thank you, that we have the truth at our fingertips, and that no man has any excuse not to know the truth. I thank you that we have conviction through the Holy Spirit of the truth, of our lives, of what we're supposed to be doing. It's an amazing thing to see what we're seeing and to know what we know and to be in your grace. Amazing. Thank you for that, Father. This morning I'd like to pray Psalm 20, the assurance of God's saving work. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice, Selah. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. May the King answer us when we call. Father, this is a declaration of your anointing, your blessing, your protecting of your children. That when we call on you, you answer. And it is their blessing is contained in here. The writer, Psalm of David, the writer, may God listen and hear you and answer you. I pray that for my brethren today, Father. May you hear their prayers. May you hear their prayers and answer them in a godly way, in an appropriate way, and in your perfect way. Giving them what they need. Giving all of us what we need. May you hear the petitions of their hearts. May you deliver them from wrath, from condemnation. Deliver them from the self-condemnation that's being propagated everywhere today. May you deliver them from false doctrine and bring them into truth. Glorious truth. Your glorious truth. May you shut the mouths of those speaking evil. So that your people will turn from those things and turn to you instead giving you glory, singing your praises, and not giving ear to man's evil. We are your children. We are citizens of heaven. We have a different destination waiting for us than everyone else. I pray that we learn to walk like it and act like it. I pray that our what we exemplify what you call a Christian. The real, the real deal. Because that glorifies you. That honors you. That 
brings people to salvation, to you for that salvation. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for showing us these things. Thank you for settling it in our hearts, the truth about our personal salvation, our assurance of what you're doing, the tr knowing the truth of what's coming, that there's a day of redemption when all things will be made right. There's a day of judgment when all things will be dealt with. And there's a day of perfection when all things will be redone and made perfect. Father, we thank you for this knowledge. Thank you for this understanding. We thank you for your grace and mercy and your great love. In Jesus' name, we praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in his mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. If you were saved, you were saved. Though you stumble and fall, though you miss the mark, though you backslide, though you get caught up in false doctrine, though you make mistakes, you are not condemned. We don't fall into the condemnation. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You can lose rewards. You can even lose inheritance. But you will be saved. And there is always an escape. Prayer. Go to him. Talk to him. Cry out to him in that day. And he will deliver you. He's waiting for you to cry out to him. He's waiting for you to do it. So he can come and he can deliver you. He wants this for his children. But if you never call out to him. What do you expect to happen? Turn to the Lord and turn to his grace and mercy and his love and ask him for help and he will help you. I can only do so much as a human. I can offer you scripture and offer you prayer. But God offers you cleansing, sanctification, justification, and salvation. He's the one you should turn to. I love you guys and it is my pleasure and my honor to pray for you. It is my joy to pray for you, to consider your issues and to lift them up to the Lord, to make intercession. I'm going to make intercession right now. Lord, I offer this prayer of intercession for my brothers and sisters who have struggles, who are having a hard time understanding your word, who are, are, are struggling in deception and backsliding all the things we talked about and so many more. Lord, I make intercession in that. I ask that if need be, if it's your will, take from my strength. Take from my sanctification. Take from my peace and give it to them. Because you have given to me overflowing. Take from me and give it to them. So that they will have the same peace, the same joy, the same encouragement every day. To get up, to grab the word, to pray. The, the encouragement, the, the, the courage and the strength and the drive and the desire that you have put in me. I pray you take and give to them. Because I am just one, they are many. The desire, the, the understanding please, please, take from me and give to them. They need it. You have blessed me abundantly and overflowing. I'm happy to share. I'm happy to give it up so that others may benefit. We trust in you. We believe in you. We pray to you. I pray to you for them. Please help them, Lord. Please go to them. Please answer them in the day of their trouble. Please hear their prayers. I love them. I know you love them, too. And you said you want you wanted intercessors. Uh, I will be an intercessor. It is my privilege to do this. So thank you, Lord. In your beloved name, I pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is the time. 
This is the time. This is the opportunity. This is the day of salvation, of change, of renewal. There is no sin you can take or you can do. There is no amount of steps you can take that will remove you from his grace or mess up your salvation. Nothing. Don't let the world lie to you. You cannot be unsaved. It is impossible. If you're in Christ Jesus, you're in Christ Jesus. Walk in it. Walk in him. And believe. I love you guys very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray he blesses you too. I pray you have a fantastic day. And I will see you guys in the next video.